That was the test. You guys all uh, passed when you mentioned that there was no audio. Let's try that again. Welcome to this special SketchUp Live Halloween edition. Um, <laughs> well, I got to think about what I just said. Usually I, I say it once, burn it, and then we move on. But now I got to rewind, and I don't use it. I use that. Uh, <laughs> This is be a special one because we have not one, but two different modelers today. Uh, first up, Death Eater Tyson is going to be modeling a jack-o'-lantern using native tools. So, how's that going to go? In character. Full respect. Uh, and then, we are Aaron, and we are going to jump in and use some extensions to model jack-o'-lantern. So, it's going to be Halloween modeling in two parts. So we are going to do this. Uh, we're going to start right now. So we're going to start with uh, Death Eater's going to hop on the mouse and do some modeling using native tools. So we'll take it away. <laughs> Get ready. Well, we got the sound effects queued up today. So <laughs> <laughs> all right, switch over to main, or you got that. You're good. Main. Happy Halloween. Ooh. All right. Nobody can understand what I'm saying, so Aaron's going to do a bit of commentary. <laughs> <laughs> I keep it creepy. Let's do... Got to start with the pumpkin, of course, if you're doing the jack-o'-lantern. So, uh, pumpkin it is. That gourd of gourds that uh, we love so much. Pumpkin pies. The best time of the season. That's right. This is going to be interesting because... Uh, I did, So, I got to admit something. I'll admit this right up front, just be totally honest. I... When I went through... And uh, we talked about doing this. I did do a little practice. I did do a little check to make sure this was something I was going to actually be able to do uh, <gasps> in a coherent way. <laughs> How dare you? I know. Broke the rule. <laughs> That's my game. <laughs> All right. So Tyson is using one of his favorite techniques, which is the old... Push and scale. That's what we used to call them in college as well. This is uh, just a matter of taking the same shape and using push pull to push it up and then immediately flipping a scale and scaling it about the center with the modifier key. Um, this is, we've used this actually many times before. This is something on the, uh, if you saw the helicopter video or the gas tank live, or the helicopter live stream or the gas tank video, uh, we've done a lot of organic. Uh, kind of smooth shapes by doing this. It's a great way, quick and easy way to to mock up those shapes. Yeah, I was gonna say like, look how quick it is to uh, yeah get a, something resembling a uh, a pumpkin pretty quick out the gate. Yeah, that was that was very fast. Um, of course, he hasn't smoothed it yet, but once he does that, then it's gonna be even better. Even more tasty. That's right. Do you like pumpkin stuff? Pumpkin flavored. You know, I I I like it. I don't. <laughs> I don't get all like hyped up about pumpkin spice lattes or whatever that you can get mm -hmm. this time of year. I mean, I'll have one. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna turn it down. So, so somebody brings me a pumpkin spice latte, I will gladly accept it. But did you yeah. get? Did you have a pumpkin spice latte this year? Not yet. So. Ooh, not yet. Yeah. I, I've kind of see like Halloween as the transition time into Christmas season and away from mm. like spooky pumpkin season. Absolutely. For me, anyway. So I'm like, you only have a couple days. That's true. I got to get on it. Um, the, the problem I have is my anniversary is October 26th. So all the time, energy thought goes into that. And then I really have a four-day four, four day window for all the week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, happy belated anniversary, hey, of course. Thanks, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, but I mean, just to, just to talk, I got I got to just, we got to talk about it. Uh, you know, we are doing costumes, obviously. You guys picked up on that. You can't see Matt, but he is in full on, like, I don't know. What would you, what would you, what's <laughs> you, what do you call your costume, Matt? I don't know. I thought of it this morning costume. Oh, stuff that's... I already normally wear. No, I don't know. It's like 80s uh, 
yeah. 80s rock fan. He's got maybe. the headband, the eyeshadow, the jean jacket. It's the band t-shirt. He's He's got it all set up. Yeah. Not nearly as elaborate as, uh, <laughs> you know, our modeler on hand today. That's right. Or so. our Venom <laughs> costume either. So I just wanted to give give a shout out right now to say that uh, I believe he'll nod if it's true, but I believe his uh, mask was modeled in SketchUp and 3D printed as well. Yes, it was. That's that's that's, that's that the, the that's the success chime. That's the U one chime for Halloween. <laughs> yeah. We did it at the end. <laughs> just a lot of church bells. So uh, yeah, but that is an awesome costume. Uh, very very good looking. So just wanted to acknowledge it now before we got too far away from it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's that's maybe less spooky whoops that was a little too that was almost christmasy that you know <laughs> yeah i'm getting started early in the jingle bells <laughs> all right so uh i have you guys caught that but tyson did copy out the footprint the shape that he wanted to base the the stem the top of the pumpkin on and then uh pulled a copy off that's a, a good way to do it if you're gonna actually not necessarily exactly copy some geometry but maybe go in and just use geometry, that geometry as a base for whatever's coming next. And then mm -hmm. we're back to the push and scale. Yeah, Calvin and Michael already calling on the chat that they love the technique and they learned so much in the first couple of minutes. And I have to agree because I'm like, yeah, it just, it's so crazy to go see something come to life so quickly, you know? That is, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. Um, Paul says, I think Tyson made this before. Did you, we've done a stream with a pumpkin before, right? Were you talking about the pumpkin or, or his outfit? Because I, I think both might be true. <laughs> I actually I think it's the same. I don't think it's a different costume. That'd be impressive, though, and remake the oh, same entire man. costume twice. But... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. That's cool. I, I like that. The, the organic look you've gotten in such a short time is pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. I mean, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we did talk beforehand where Tyson tried to do some commentary and uh, it was more than a little muffled. So we had the option either of he would just stay in character and silently model whilst hating all things potter related or <laughs> try to talk and it would sound like this. <laughs> so we decided in character was the way to go. So I don't know if you, I do want to I do want to harken back to something Tyson did. We we did uh, I didn't comment on it, but he did take that the the first pumpkin the shell that he made shrunk it down and put it inside the first one. So he created a, a, a solid with a void on the inside. Um, so you can see that in the, the X ray right there. You can see that it's actually. A shape with a hole like not unlike the pumpkins that nature makes mm -hmm. i want to see the guts see the guts and some pumpkin seeds you know i was thinking about that i'm like <laughs> what if i should get scatter fired up and like or, or that'd be cool comp component uh randomizer and and do some pumpkin seeds but i didn't spoiler i did not do that it's for you at home after we post the models after the stream then you can uh that's right jump in add your own details that's right um, I, I, I can guess, but I think Tyson is modeling some facial features to put onto the, uh, the pumpkin at this point. Yeah, that's quick, uh, quick pattern recognition of teeth. That's right. You've seen it before. I'll throw this out to, uh, to the audience real quick. You guys Got any Halloween plans? Anybody dressing up? I want to hear the coolest costume either in mind. I mean, we still have, there's days left to put a Halloween costume together. So we've got uh, hours. That's, that's right. There's plenty of time. Mm -hmm. uh, just curious what, what everybody's got. Everybody got a, uh, any ideas for what they want to make? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Word. Hold on. Hold on. Instant replay. Did you just use the same mouth shape and create an eye cutout for it? That's use what you got. That's designer ninjutsu right there. That's almost scary. 
<laughs> All right. Calvin's wondering what the best way is to learn shortcut keys. Um, yeah, so I do. So I do use a key logger to show on screen what I use when I do shortcuts. Tyson doesn't because he's so far off of the default. Uh, he has concern <laughs> over it being confusing. Um, I don't know. I guess if you're a very visual person and seeing a reminder of what you just did helps. Uh, really, it's a matter of. This is going to sound incredibly sarcastic. It's not intended to be, but just doing it, just do it. Get uh, your shortcut keys set up. If you need to, write them down, put them on the side of your monitor, something like that, and just start using them. Um, turn off your toolbar so you're not, re you know, you're not going up and clicking M. So you're hitting M on your keyboard instead. But uh, I don't know that there's a special uh, method other than that for getting used to and using your your shortcut keys. Just nothing. Yeah, to it and you can to use the quick start guide. Cause that has all the shortcut keys on it too. So if you look up SketchUp quick start guide, um, it has the, has the shortcut keys on there. Ooh, we did a quick, quick intersect there with solid tools. Something to note there too. I feel like I'm, I'm doing commentary on like, uh, <laughs> like I'm on iron chef or something. So Who's you on? do play Who's by on? play and I'll do color. There we go. But just with sounds. <laughs> so <laughs> what Tyson did there, he did, go in and use solid tools. Something to note that, that, uh, there we go. Look at that. So that broke, ooh, nine, two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> so sometimes when, when you guys do this, when you do, uh, intersections like that and you get those breaks, generally speaking, the thing that's causing it is usually uh, a close intersection. So if there's a vertex coming from your cutter that meets right on or right near a vertex of the piece being cut, it'll sometimes give you weird uh, stuff like that where it won't create a face. So there's a couple things you can do. One is you can slightly, you know, move your, your cutter around a little bit, see if that does it. Sometimes scaling, scaling does, is kind of a weird catch-all inside of SketchUp. Sometimes if you take your model and you scale it up to like a hundred or a thousand times, it'll just slightly move where those vertices hit and then you'll end up with the uh, solid tools working perfectly. So just something to consider if you ever run into that situation. And probably didn't catch, but I, I, this is a, a 60 foot pumpkin to start with. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys caught that, but the death eater was mentioning that he is working on a very big house sized pumpkin to begin with. And also something else, you know, I, I don't know if this is intentional. I assume this was intentional Tyson, but his, uh, Tyson's, um, ooh, that was a good, good move. Uh, oops. You got one of your lines from the back, your side lines. Mm. There you go. Um, when he created his arcs for the facial expressions, he did keep them low counts on his arcs. So he didn't have big, huge pieces. The, the arcs were only a couple, six, six-sided arcs, I think. Uh, makes it a little bit easier to, to work in here, too. Does that mean you're going to mm -hmm. stitch? Are you going to stitch that up, Tyson? We're uh, going to try creating a different intersection and see if we can stick it in here. All right. So, let's so we're see, gonna, uh... Tyson's going to create a donor intersection volume oh ooh, no close no, still close. didn't work close. all right we're gonna we're gonna force it all right calvin said he really wants to create skull masks but he's a beginner so your videos have taught me everything i know he says so all right <laughs> which apparently is not enough to make a skull mask that's what i heard right. just now Hey, a couple more, couple more skill builders before right. you get there. Maybe by next Halloween. Um, well, that's interesting because it was a couple years ago, but we did have a Halloween where uh, I showed a domino superhero mask that I created and Tyson showed the creation of his mask in SketchUp. So that one year was actually, is 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 maskful. Maskful, maskerful. Nice. Oh, and his one. We like it. So this Did was this also thing. modeled and 3D printed from SketchUp. So nice, nice. That's awesome. Very cool. So let's see if this works. 
Did that not work either? There we go. All right. Got it. So there, he made that, that separate intersection off on the side and dropped it in there. Again, okay, so I, I should I should disclaim this. We are called, solid tools is what we would call a native extension. So it is created as part of the, the uh, API. It is outside of the default code, but it is an extension. So, uh, but we're allowing that as a default extension. <laughs> Not allowed. <laughs> Get him out of here. All right. Coloring it up. There we go. Yeah, now it looks like it's glowing on the inside by putting the, you know, that's one of the things that if, if people ask all the time, you know, what about rendering? What about lights? What about that kind of stuff? And and I, I've seen some people do amazing, beautiful work with renders, but it, it amazes me what people can do to trick the eye with just colors and like hiding lines and coloring lines inside of SketchUp, you can get some pretty cool stuff. So just by doing that, by putting that light yellow inside and then putting a darker orange on the outside, it looks like it's glowing. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. and then if we do this, because if we turn shadows on, I lose that, but we can right. exclude it from shadows. Oh. There we go. Turning shadows on, but excluding that face. I like it. Okay. Mm, gotcha. Thanks. So the so shadows, was... you can exclude shadows from, is it like just raw geometry or groups and components too? Surfaces. Yeah, you have to, you have to select okay. a surface. Cool. I don't often do that, so it's cool to see. Yeah. So it still casts the shadow. It just doesn't affect the surface with the light and darks from uh, the sun. All right. That's nice. number one. All right. Nice jack o' lantern. <laughs> Always amazed. <laughs> Got him queued up, baby. Michael says, uh, speaking of 60 foot pumpkins, there's a pumpkin of similar dimensions in the Disney Channel classic Halloween Town. Are you guys familiar with this film? I don't know that I know that one. I think it's uh, maybe more popular with the younger generation. The kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily children, but uh, yeah, younger than you and I, at least. Yeah, I always appreciate. I've at least heard of it. I always appreciate when uh, Matt groups me together with him age-wise because <laughs> I feel good about that. All right, uh, I think I think Tyson's getting crazy here. Hmm, curly cues. I'm trying to commentary. I'm trying to comment, but uh, sometimes I'm just like, I, I don't, not in a bad way, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a lot of things. We're decking Could out this pumpkin. Links. That's right. <laughs> what was that? It's a witch, I think. That's what it's, that's what it's labeled as here. It sounded like Gina Linetti from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's a young person's reference for you. <laughs> Ooh, it is a curly. Mm. Um, I just just so just to say this of this entire practice, everything we're doing here today, a lot of people come in to sketch up and especially people I think people who end up on the forums more end up this way, where they assume that in order to create anything outside of box shapes, you have to get in and start using extensions. I see a lot of people asking that like, oh, well, I assume I have to have an extension to do this or this or this shape. And uh, it's just not, not the case with a lot of things. There's an amazing amount of geometry you can generate with just default uh, tools, with just the native tools. Uh, a lot of times my favorite extensions aren't the things that make things that nothing else can. My favorite extensions are the ones that make it a little bit easier to create that specific or certain geometry. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think there's a whole lot of geometry where I'm like, oh, couldn't could ever do that. You can't do that with, with SketchUp. Mm -hmm. And uh, for folks, if they missed the beginning, what we're doing, speaking of extensions, is Tyson's going to model a Jack Lantern with no extensions. And then Aaron's gonna come in and model one uh, with extensions to show you just a couple different ways of approaching uh, 
a similar subject. This is looking really cool, though. I like the stem coming together pretty yeah. quickly. I'm thinking in my head how I up my game because my, my jack lantern looks simple by, by comparison now. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Death Eater Patrick O'Brien says you got a great outfit on. <laughs> uh, he he just cursed you. Sorry. Death Eaters when roll. Guardian Liviosa. <laughs> Wait, is that Death Eaters? Um, I don't know. I, those wizards all run together for me. <laughs> that was a mighty junt. Junt. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. This is cool. Looks like it came right out the patch. That's right. This is something too that I, I just, just to comment on, um, when I look at some of the modeling that that I see people do, reusing components and distorting their outside shell is probably an underused tool. Uh, you know, as opposed to having a dozen different versions of a thing, taking one version of a thing and just moving it and changing the shape. Something that uh, it's, it doesn't get its due, you know. All right. This is uh, second pumpkin, pumpkin number two. Nice. Going on to the revenge. Pumpkin two, the second jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> we didn't even practice that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Andy points out that Tyson should be showing us how to do magic tricks. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Or is it really called magic tricks or is it more wizardry? Spells, incantations. I feel like from the Harry Potter movies I've seen, when Death Eaters do magic, somebody dies. And being the yeah. only one in the room with Tyson, I'd prefer to just skip that. <laughs> All right. So. Tyson's got a squatty pumpkin that he's rotating a specific number of degrees. Or a squatty, a squatty shape, a squatty sphere. Squatosphere. Squatosphere. Yeah. <laughs> I like this, uh, this method because it kind of lets you be like, okay, what do you want quick. this to be? Uh, ah. Squattier one? Nice. Mm. That's some some and more like a gourd pseudo parametric Ooh. modeling happening right here. Parametricy, if you will. Mm. That's cool. We'll do something like that. What are we looking at? <laughs> frame so you see it 3d mouse or magic wand <laughs> what's that device in his left hand well <laughs> let's say elder <laughs> wand may not have uh yeah so this is another thing so tyson tyson's hitting the the the, the hits that was dumb um <laughs> But uh, using move without having anything selected and grabbing a point to move it up and down. That's a, uh, a great pro move. Great way to uh, affect geometry. Turning on hidden geometry and then just moving a single point at a time. Very cool. It's Paul all agrees. Really cool, he says. We're almost tying together uh, the kinetic sculptures with the pumpkin here as he's moving one piece of the component and having it show up across them all. You and Andy had the same thought at the same time. He said the exact same thing. No, oh, yeah. Andy's a smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin said, yeah, hopefully next Halloween, he'll be able to pull off the mask That's... or put on the mask and then pull it off probably eventually. But yeah, don't sleep in the mask. Yeah. That's weird. It's bad. Unless it's a sleep apnea mask. Well, yeah, if you can but... 3d design and 3d print one of those for yourself, then you're, in good shape probably saving money so tyson is switching to the side here and using scale just on a section this is another thing where uh 
you know, a lot of times people don't think about connecting and stretching geometry, but that is something that you can do very easily with, uh, with components, especially something that's a mesh like this sphere. And I'm just going to throw this out too. I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. If you can't make a sphere in like five seconds, like Tyson did, you should just sit down and practice. That should be your goal. Uh, before 2022 hits six second sphere. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's like fast and the furious. Like, That's right. Circle, circle, follow me. It's just that fast. All right. So he's taking that that geometry, that that series of uh, components, and exploding them out. So they're not components anymore. So he can he can work on these without affecting all the rest, and then intersecting it to get a single shell out here. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, you know, you go to the pumpkin patch, you're definitely going to find a pumpkin that's a little more squashed. Squatty, like you called it. That's right. All right, here's one more. We'll, we'll call it. We already did our intersections over here. Here's one last uh, native endeavor. All right, so he's satisfied with the, the jack-o'-lanterning work he's done. Now he's just showing us how to whip out the pumpkins. Show me the pumpkin. <laughs> well, I want to show a way to color it. Uh, just to give you uh, uh, some props, Dubs31 says that Tyson is killing it right now. Well done, sir. Technique, a plenty being learned. Yeah, they said... Uh... Too bad you can only like a video once. Ooh, thanks. I do believe pumpkins are squashes. I think you're correct. Yeah, good call, Andy. I like a gourd, you know? A little gourd with some barnacles on the side kind of things. Um, they really bring the season to life. You can get, definitely get some... Some good uh, variation in pumpkins. My wife likes the white pumpkins. Oh, we got one of those this year. They're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, they're uh, they're cool. Good, good for mixing it up and keeping it keeping it spooky. Ooh, Ooh yeah. Tyson's getting fancy with the paint. We can't create gradients natively. So. It's just my images. A master class in native tool usage right here. Should be charging galleons for this. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be raiding out my Gringot safe for this. So for those of you who did not catch that, Tyson put one color on an arched surface, and then uh, did you just screenshot it then? I just exported it as an image, but screenshot would do the same, yeah. Yeah, so then he just spit it out and then pulled it back in as a new image, and he's got gradients. Because there is no native, like he just pointed out, there is no native gradients. But uh, by doing this, he just created it. I have to agree with May. So cool. So so cool. I'm I'm on board with that. Yeah, norm normally I just shake my head and silently as Tyson models, but this time I'm actually getting a lot out of it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm totally kidding, of course. I I always enjoy and get something out of these sessions for sure. Don't we all? Don't we all? Oh, interesting. I think you have intersecting geo interior geometry still hitting up top. I think you're right. Well, I'll just paint the whole thing then. Here you go. Take this. All right, so when you first bring an image in, it is in its own special group. 
you do have to uh, explode it out to get access to the texture. So he's going to pull it and drop it. The effect may not be... You might have to turn off shadows just to get the full effect of that gradient. There you go. Yeah. See how it's dark around the bottom? All right. It was, it was not an extreme gradient. But, no. Uh, <laughs> no. Not too many pumpkins are that extreme. That is true. Unless I carve them. <laughs> Good, because you're it, up. I think I'm wrapped. Nice. That is... Turned out very, very cool. It is. So many tips were had by all. Yeah, that was awesome. I'm trying to think what to pirate. What can I steal going second? <laughs> and then say something like, it's amazing that you had this same technique, huh? <laughs> all right cool all right well here's, Boom. here's a little transition music for everybody nice Ooh. <laughs> gotta get that lovely transition music going bring it up Van is unmasked. Something happened in here. <laughs> yeah, so after about, uh, I don't know, a solid five minutes in the Venom costume, and I realized <laughs> that was not going to last long. It's very warm, and it's, uh, it's very hard to hold your arm up like this. Oh, can't see that, can you? Would <laughs> like, you have a green glove on? I have a green shirt on, long sleeve, can't. So you can actually see them down here. Down oh, the okay. Look, but there they are. Oh my gosh, I'm spooked. Yeah. This is the level of production we bring to you guys on Halloween. <laughs> see? Scared? Okay. So we're. <laughs> And I, did, I just want to say this. It occurred to me that, uh, yeah, that could have been anybody modeling under there, but it really was Tyson. I promise. It was <laughs> it was him. As he walked away and took his mask off, I'm like, oh, yeah, somebody might call him on that. But, <laughs> but you, you guys could see him in the interstitial, the waiting waiting thing. So. That's right. He'll, he'll be on the end credits. I was desperate to get out of that. I bet. It was toasty in there, too. All right, so... What we're going to do, if I go like this. Oh. <laughs> Gosh. This is the scariest day I've ever been a part of. Next year, I'll be nearly headless Nick. <laughs> there you go. Get a nice, just a piece of green uh, tape is all you really need. All right, so I'm going to go through and make a, a jack lantern. I'm already falling short of Tyson's greatness because I didn't plan for more than one. Um, but we're going to use some extensions instead of doing it with the native tools. So, But full respect for everything that just happened. I'm going to start off very similar to how Tyson did and get a polygon in here. I'm going to pull that polygon out. What do, how many do I have? Uh, 12 sides. That sounds good. I'm going to do a 12-sided polygon. Go like this. And I'm gonna... You need 13. Take... <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. 
Too late. It's already been drawed. Uh, I'm going to turn it so that the edge is perpendicular to the red. Because what I want to do is I want to start similar to, uh, I think Tyson did something along these lines. I want to start just with the chunk. So I want just this piece right here. I did something wrong though. I think it's that last, last one. Um, I want to start with this piece. So this, I know this is one twelfth of a full pumpkin. I'm going to use sub D. So I'm going to take sub D and actually use it to go in and create uh, all the geometry I'm about to, to, to soften all the geometry I'm about to do. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come here. I'm going to pull up, let's see, we'll say eight inches. Eight inches isn't a value. I just want to know the dimension so I could get the exact same dimension over here. And that's the shape I'm going to start with. So can you turn your key logger on? Let's see. Yes, I can. Nice. Thanks. Nice. Key logger activated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to get this as a set of solids. And now I'm going to take this and modifier key, pull this up a little. I still have option turned on right now. So I do have, we have guests. <laughs> Woo! We have lots of staff members. I got to get all the way out of here because my, my greenness is covering it. <laughs> Hang Can you out. do a full screen? Right, come, come on the boom. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Halloween from everybody. <laughs> so what are we doing today? Uh, nothing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Right, Hi, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 All right. Bring us back in here real quick. <laughs> that was fun. That was unexpected. Didn't even know that was going to happen. So <laughs> let's get back to it. All right. Um, you know what? It's better than when they burst into a live stream and shot at me. So we're improving work-wise. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to pull up some shapes like this. Uh, I'm using the... Uh, plus modifier, so I'm pulling up new faces each time I do this. I will go up. I kind of get this uniform, go big like this, and then we'll do another small one up at the top. All right there. So that is the shape I want. Right now, this is full of interior faces though. So this is actually has, I forgot, I can use a lot more of the screen when I'm doing this because my body doesn't get in the way of stuff. Um, yeah, by the way, we've had some comments that we should have rated this one at least PG-13. Maybe R, because this is graphic content. It's spooky. It's, it's, uh... Spooky. <laughs> um, Tyson, I wonder if you can get it either a little bit closer to the mic or turn up the, uh, the little knob. Oh, I'll get right in here. We're going to get nice. all that real great. close. That's the stuff. <laughs> a little too close. <laughs> 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 all right. So this doesn't look like much right now, but what I'm actually seeing right here is the outside edge of the pumpkin. It's a little bit squatty again, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the whole thing and just scale it up so it's a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna manipulate some of these shapes. So I'm gonna grab this line right here and I'm gonna move it vertically. That's gonna give me kind of a crease uh, as it comes in towards the stem. I'm gonna take these faces right here and I'm gonna move them out along the red axis. So that is, that's the reason right there is the reason that I uh, shifted it, turned that the slice so it was parallel to the red axis. So it would make it easier to do this piece. As I'm doing this right now, as I pull this out, you can see it is doing some weird stuff. So I got this, this here, this auto folded, this corner didn't. This is one of the things that move does 
a native move. So what I'm going to do instead is use an extension because that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And I'm going to use Vertex Tools. Vertex Tools is an extension from TomTom. Tom. And one of the things that Vertex Tools does is it allows you to move geometry and it maintains quads. So when I did that, it did hold on to this, these pieces like it was supposed to. Boom. Um, so I'll try to do that instead of, you know, with my uh, all, all mostly extension workflow. Ooh, something weird happened here. It didn't move this piece down. Hmm. All right. Well, I could figure it out yeah. or I could fix it. We're all at solutions here on SketchUp Live. That's right. If you don't like solutions, you're in the wrong place. Huh. That is weird. If you ever have quads break like that, you can manually create a quad by grabbing the line between two triangles like this, going to Entity Info and hiding it. Oops. Before you hide it, turn off shadows and then soften and smooth it. And that maintains it as a quad. That was very considerate of you to uh, accidentally break it. So That's you right. Show that. Totally unpurposely accidental. All right. <laughs> That looks pretty good. Um, if I take that right now, I'm going to make it into a component. I'm going to call it a slice and I'm going to sub D it just to see how it looks. All right. Not bad. It's still a little blocky. It's still a little squarish. So I might want to pull these edges in a little bit. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to go ahead and grab. Oh, I got to go into, into context. Oh, rookie move. And then I'm going to turn off. Actually, no, I'll use those guys too. I like it. And then we'll try scaling about the middle. No, I can't do that because that actually, that goofs up. What I want to maintain here is the location of this piece. Uh, on the outside because if I bring it in that's going to create gaps between my different pieces So if I take it right now, let's just go ahead and do this. I'm gonna take this one I'm gonna go to rotate and rotate from this corner to this corner x11 So there's my my unsoftened pumpkin and I can always check it by just toggling sub D to see what happens So some stuff weird is happening like this right here. This is pulling back that will stay together eventually. Not a problem in the long run, but the rest of it, um, yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks kind of cakeish though, so I don't love that. Mm. I love pumpkin cake. What? That's true. It's not a bad thing. But what I want to do at this point, I do want to uh, uh, decide at what point I want to join it all back together. Because at some point, I'm going to want to do that. And what I want to figure out is when do I, when am I done manipulating the individual pieces? so that I could put it back together. I might do a little bit more work at this point. So I might grab this, use vertex tools, maybe slide that back a little bit. And then what's gonna happen is they're all gonna move back and I can start seeing kind of just, okay, sub D that, that looks better, it looks a little better. Maybe I'll take this face right here, use vertex tools on that and maybe pull that straight out a little bit. Maybe get me a little bit more of a, a pumpkin-y look to it. Yeah, that made a big difference. Sub D that. All right, so I'm looking more pumpkin, Pumpkinish, pumpkinish, pumpkiny. Um, it's getting there. I do want to do some work up here on the top, though. I want to have it go down in like Tyson's did. But to do that, I will have to destroy my components. So I'll do it right now. I'm going to grab all these. Oh wait, I'm not going to grab all these because there's one component I wasn't paying attention to. If I pop my head in here, Sumela is hanging outside the pumpkin. Ah. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll delete her. Otherwise, when I explode her, her raw geometry may merge with my pumpkin and cause issues with the subdivision. I grab all this, explode, and now that it's exploded, I do need to group it again. Um, Sub-D works on groups and components, so if I don't have it in a component, uh, it's kind of, it can cause issues. So now if I go ahead and subdivide, it worked okay, but it kind of got mushy. Look, I got, I got some weird mushiness like right here in the lines because I didn't actually crease those edges. So if I wanted to now, what I would have to do is come in here, grab this, 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 this. Actually, I might be able to use quad face tools to grab that whole loop. Okay, so it went half. There's no turning back now. <laughs> I 
Matt knows that I'm hinting at maybe undoing my explosion. <laughs> so he just dared me to not. So uh, here's, no, what no turning to, back. here's what I'm going to try. Here's what I'm going to try to do. I need that warning so many times in modeling. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm going to grab this edge, one of the edges on the bottom, and I'm going to use quad face tools, another extension from TomTom, Tom, to grab that whole loop. And see, that grabs all the pieces going up all the way around. With those highlighted, I can go to sub D, I can say crease, and I'm just going to go to 100 on that. Just If I had 11, I would go to 11. Bye. And then when I sub D, I have much more of a, a crease right here. Um, so yeah, pumpkin-y looking. I'm going to go ahead and, oops. There we go. So something like I said, I want to, I'm not worried about the bottom so much, but I do want to in here kind of get like a little more of a dent down that I can drop a stem into. So to do that, I'm going to grab another, uh, tool here. Let's see if I can just do it with this. If I just go like that. Anyone keep keeping track of the uh, extension count out there? <laughs> yeah, we need a bell to go off every... We need a little counter every... on screen. <laughs> yeah, and a bell. Bing. <laughs> All right, so what I, what I want to do here is I want to select all the edges here, and I'm going to break this. I'm going to put a, a break around all of them. A lot of times subdivision modeling comes down to knowing uh, how to manipulate the mesh you're working with. And a lot of times that means selecting. So in this case, I want just these edges right here. So I don't want these ones down here. These ones down here are easy to turn off because I can just hold down shift, uh, shift alt, which is a minus to select that. But up here, I only want edges and no faces. So I'm gonna right click and use the selection toys extension to say select only edges, which will turn the face off. At that point, I should be able to use uh, create loop or not. I'm in uncharted territory. I'm, I'm riffing right now. <laughs> mm, I love it. Just uh, figuring it out. Um, we do have a special guest and you just saw him in the chat. Jody's here. Hey, Jody. Oh, I don't I don't think of myself as special, but thanks. Oh, super duper special guest. Nice. I guess I'm not doing that. <laughs> Dude, I'm loving, loving Aaron's costume. Thanks. This was a, uh, this is a 10 minute last minute throw together after I created the previous one. So glad it worked out. <laughs> All right. So I can't, I'm not, one of the problems that I have with the geometry I just created. So I created this, this is my own fault, but I did go in and create uh, non-rectangles, which isn't a problem. The subdivision engine recognizes triangles and works with them just fine. Unfortunately, sub D or, or I'm sorry, quad face tools makes it really hard to select geometry once you get a bunch of triangles mixed in, which I just did. So I have to get creative and come in and try to cut this without that. So I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to come in here with that same polygon I had before. I'm going to go straight up above this point, pull it out. We'll go out on, on axis, about that big. I'm gonna grab it then, and I'm gonna rotate it. So again, oops, from the middle, grab the middle part, rotate that so it's on axis. And then what I can do is I can push pull this through, reminiscent of what Tyson just did, make that into a group. And then come in here, grab this mesh and say intersect face with model. And that will actually break my mesh right there. Broken. 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 Um, if I wanted to, I could actually, let's do this again. I could grab this. I could scale it up around the middle. Do the same thing again. Intersect face with model. And I got two rings. So now I can grab, grab just this, turn again, unselect the bottom part. Looks good. And now I can use vertex tools to scoot that down to drop it in like that. And I should, everything should still be nice and subdividable. Oh, awesome. Nice. Not bad. You sounded surprised. What's the deal? Oh, <laughs> I wonder if I could, I wonder if I could. Ooh position it. 
Nice. We got a pumpkin body. There's a delay, so a little bit off, but hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can do What's it. in the box? <laughs> okay. Um, for a stem. Were you just quoting Dune, Matt? No, he was quoting no, seven. Dune. No, I know. There's oh. a box in Dune too. Oh yeah. There's boxes everywhere. Also, a box on SNL and on our forum. There was a head in hey. a box in Dune, but it was a bull's head. Just a moving box. Yeah, but sure. All right, I'm, I'm gonna pose a spoiler, so I'm gonna move along. <laughs> I'm gonna do something similar to what Tyson did with his uh, pushing. What what do I call it? Pushing scale. <laughs> Push scale. I'm going to use uh, push in vertex manipulate. Doesn't work the same. So with this, I can do the same thing. I can I can manipulate this like this. But one of the nice things, the cool things about vertex tools, it does give me the ability to scale. But I can also, while I'm in the same tool, rotate. I can come out here, push that up, and then again hit vertex tools, and then I can do a little little scale in. We did have one comment from Jeffrey here. He was wondering if the uh, part of the scariness of the stream is the lack of saving. <laughs> it is. Are you scared yet? Especially <laughs> throwing plugins at this. Matt, did you did you out and find a, a save uh, sound clip that's like a zombie? Save. Oh, no. I'm just going to have to do no? it on the fly. Okay. <laughs> Great. So if it yells a curse word instead, then uh... that's definitely the sound effects board malfunctioning. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's that would not be Matt. Matt wouldn't do that. All right. <laughs> no. I'm gonna grab that. This fancy three second delay. We we catch all that, right? Oh yeah. That's on you. <laughs> yeah, you got the bleep button. Watch that thing. Mute, 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 mute. All right. So there we go. I'm gonna grab this. I'm going to soften and smooth my subdivided geometry right now, too. Looks good. And so just to make this a little bit different from what Tyson did, which is why we're all here. Um, if I was to go in and um, carve a face into a jack-o'-lantern, I would probably use the exact same path that, that Tyson did. I would go in and draw shapes on the flat push them into uh, a depth and then go cut them. But since I have to use an extension, instead I'm gonna use something that was actually new to me, which was tools on surface. So what this actually lets you do, oops, I gotta come in here, get in context. It lets you come in here and draw shapes right onto the surface of uh, inside the, surface. the model. And yeah. The surface in the surface, yeah, basically. <laughs> so what I can do is, as I'm doing this, you can see it's it's actually taking this line and it's molding. Ah, there you go. <laughs> I never know how to get out of that command. Honestly, I've I've used it twice now. <laughs> what you should see. do is just crash since you still haven't saved. I like how you completely ignored that. Oh, I, I think did. that's his. That's his, that's the idea. Is I want to start over, so I'm just going to hope that it crashes. <laughs> no, I'm I'm living on the edge. I'm Halloweenville, baby. I'm. It's all about the horror. The horror. Actually, speaking of which, speaking of which, <laughs> nailed it. Nice. Nice. I got it all. We never doubted you on that one. We knew you had that. Yeah, it's always there. Always in the back pocket. Um. We always end up talking about movies or TV shows on this stream at some point. And I don't know if you guys have ever watched the the movies that made us on documentary on Netflix. Haven't seen it yes, yet. I have some of them, not all of them. They have a new series came out and the first three episodes are Halloween, Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street, which I thought was That's cool. pretty cool. All right. So Here's the thing that I noticed, and this this may be my naivete when it comes to working with tools on surface, is that even though these look like they should have intersected, they didn't break my surfaces. 
So what I ended up doing was doing this. Actually, here, here's what I did. I grabbed this and when I exploded it, I think at that point, it actually broke that. Mm. So I don't know, it's possible there's a different way to do that. I might be doing it wrong. It has happened once before, um, <laughs> but I may have made a mistake. So that gave me that. Oh, I really want to save right now. <laughs> you can, there's nothing against oh. it. Okay, for you guys, I'm going to do it. I'm going to save. Save. All right. Because the last, <laughs> the last bit so I'm going to do is, I, I'm not doubting it, but I've just run into issues with it before, which is to use uh, joint push pulls thickener to come in here and drag in, give this pumpkin some depth. Nobody wants a thin pumpkin. That's right. Mm-mm. And there we go. I'll grab that and then soften it again. Extension ding. Counter's going up. All right, so I'm going to grab it all. <laughs> give it that nice. Oh, we need brighter than that. Well, it gets brighter because you put a candle point. inside. I know, but we have we have virtual candles here. And as I learned from Tyson, grab a nice dark orange. Put it on the outside and make it look like it's glowing. Take that even Ooh, a little further. Nice jack o lantern. That is oddly specific. Wow. <laughs> kind of terrifyingly, <laughs> though, yeah. Matt's doing his homework. <laughs> it's like he knew what we were going to model beforehand. Oh, wow. oh, man. That's part of the, I have a, you know, crystal ball. It's all part of the season. That's right. So he's an It 80s. goes perfectly with your costume, too. I, I keep looking at you, Matt, and I, I need some eyeliner, man. I, like you really need to, some good dark eyes going with that. Yeah. That Iron Maiden oh, I definitely need to start wearing eyeliner on a daily basis. Really, any so. any excuse I have to put on eyeliner, I'm there. I like Ooh. it. All right. Well, that was the pumpkin I had planned. So that's pretty slick. That's a, that's a headless bow. Here you go. <laughs> it's not uh, headless. That's all I see is a head. Okay, it's a it's bodyless a, bow. It's a headful bow. Yes. Um, full headed. Mindful. That's right. Really. Ooh, mindful. Let me go get a green glove and a Put platter. Just man. Yeah, but actually, I think I could do this. If I, if I really, if I can get over <laughs> to the edge enough. All right, there we go. Nice. <laughs> it would be. It'd actually be better if you had your other costume you're showing off. And you could use the, you could have venom eating your head. Yeah, that'd be a lot. Plus, I didn't know. So I got to be honest. So my costume was kind of thrown together with stuff I had in my garage. I did kind of wing that. Um, it didn't really plan some things like how much it hurts to oh, keep your elbow above your head for a long time. And, well, uh, and carjacks are, car are kind of heavy to carry around for all day. <laughs> and the sweater I chose, sweatshirt I chose is... Uh, it's not light. It's it's very thick. So it's very hot and very uh, yeah. It's it's fun. But uh, okay, on behalf of Tyson and uh, Matt and Jody and Venom, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I want to say thank you guys for hanging out with us. Everybody have a fun, have a safe Halloween. I know we cut it a little bit short here, but this was a fun one. We just wanted to get together and hang out. And uh, you guys have a good time. Take care. And uh, we'll see you in November. <laughs> hey, that's next month. Happy Halloween. <laughs>